So this is crazy. Folks on board a United flight heading from L.A. to Boston had their lives threatened after a man tried to disarm and open a door mid-flight. He then tried to take over the plane. Video of the incident shows a man standing, yelling at passengers, telling them he would kill them all and that he was taking over the flight. He then goes down the aisle holding a broken spoon like a weapon before attacking a flight attendant, trying to stab her in the neck. Other passengers did subdue the man. Now the suspect is now facing federal charges. So what do we think of all this? And would you go and try to subdue him? I immediately would see Jeff almost like for sure I, excited to subdue him. I don't know how he got that far. I don't know why that video is not more violent. After 9-11, right? That was, wow, 20 something years ago now, which is crazy. To, I, I that, know. That just hit me like that. But after 9-11, if I saw some guy with, let alone a box cutter or a spoon, walk across my family and my wife, that guy wouldn't have made it past my seat. He made it all the way to the front. I don't know why more people weren't trying to jump on him. He had a broken spoon and some, I don't know, I probably shouldn't say this on air, but something in me with knowing that nothing would happen to me and I get free reign at this man's neck, face, area, wherever I want, it's good kind of exciting to me. I know some people No, I, I, I know that must be hard for some people to hear, but it's true. Some people are ready and fight or flight, but I also think it excites certain people. It, and then it sounds disgusting, but like if people are outside the ring, like on my door, I'm like, I wish you would. I wish you would. You know what I mean? I, I don't know why. I, I, I'm sick. Animalistic. Yeah. <laughs> Animalistic. Well, I I just, seriously, in all seriousness, I don't know how he got that far. So I don't know why everyone wasn't jumping he, into action and doing something. I wonder if people thought something. the air, whatever, Marshall, Marshall. was going to come, because I agree with you. Sorry to interrupt. I just wondered if they were waiting. I think we all think about what we would have done in that situation. I immediately thought about Jeff when we heard this story. I thought about my husband because he's very much the same way. Like yeah. I would have had to stop myself from stopping him. Mm. But then my natural thing is to protect him by protecting him from himself. Um, but re realistically in a situation like that where everyone on that plane is in jeopardy at that point, I understand a lot of people are like, oh, it was just a, you know, it was a broken off spoon, but the mentality was there that he had tampered with the door. Right. Why wasn't he stopped people. at that point? Right. He had threatened people. Then he said he was going to take over the plane. Right. At hmm. that point, like it, he was definitely touched by an angel that day because anybody on that flight could have taken him out. Yeah. Shocking. Considering everything that we've seen. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Uh, speaking of which, it seems like every day there was another story about safety issues on airplanes from mid-air attacks to severe turbulence and more and more close calls between planes, including this one. A United Airlines plane being towed on the tarmac clipped wings with another aircraft at Boston's Logan Airport. Just last week, something similar happened at the same airport. So what's going on that's causing all of these safety issues and what should be done? So the Today Show interviewed Tori's favorite retired oh. pilot, Captain Soli. Here's what he said. As good as a job as we've done in this complex system, there's always improvements that can be made and we still have work to do. Uh, two things that stand out for me right now that are long term issues, but we need to work on is the FAA and our other critically important infrastructure needs to be able to get from Congress predictable uh, long-term multi-year funding uh, so that we're not doing band-aids where we take a long-term approach and we need to have um, FAA administrators who are confirmed and not a series of acting administrators. So the FAA has set a safety summit for next week, but does all of this make you nervous about flying? Tori, you love Sully. What did you think oh. about his answer, and what do you think about flying? I think he's probably right, and I think he also spoke about COVID and have two years off for people. It makes it um, rusty in a way that's like not great for passengers to feel that way. Um, here's what I think. The head of the Department of Transportation is Pete Buttigieg. Somebody needs to step up and say, we're looking at this, we get it, this is an umbrella issue. It should be him. This, along with the train derailments and all of this that's going on, he needs, he needs to step up. And I love the man. But if he wants to make a name for himself, and if he wants to step up in terms of Department of Transportation, and you believe in the infrastructure and someone above saving us, this man needs to be on our televisions every day right now. Because it is freaking us out, and literally, he is the one in charge of stopping it.
Well said. Yeah, well said. Drop. Like, yeah. My neck feels better. <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking of flying, hold on, Tori. Oh. Speaking of flying, for some people, one of the most annoying things to deal with is a super talkative seatmate. Well, a woman on TikTok has what some are calling a genius hack to keep conversations around you to a minimum. Take a listen. If you're ever at a hotel or I've used this on airplanes as well, where people are next to you and being really loud and rude, and you like want to ask them to be quiet, if you say to them, hey, I'm sorry, could you please quiet down? I have to wake up really early for a funeral tomorrow. Every time they immediately feel so bad <laughs> and they will quiet down instantly. Mm. That, that makes me feel weird. That's disgusting. Weird. Weird. That's yeah, disgusting. Like that. but, I, her Girl. saying that so casually is weird. Dude, it's it's totally karma. bad karma. I don't know if that's the mindset of people out there. What is happening? So Why would you ever first, do what is going on? We all on? have the same reaction all to of this. Us. All okay, because I didn't know how you guys How about you felt? put a pair of headphones on and pretend you're asleep exactly. instead of wishing someone in your family was dead? <laughs> I, you, because you really, you can't. Words got power. You can't be just mm -hmm. killing people off. Okay. And she said it so casually. I just say I'm going to a funeral. Like really? That's life and death, and you're just like throwing that out there. And again, I, you brought up a great point. She'd rather say that than have an actual. Yeah, like people, we're lacking in conversation. Like I love it. I, I don't know if my Uber driver love it, but I love it. Like I just went to a concert. <coughs> this guy was from Uganda. We talked the whole time. If I had an extra ticket, I would have brought him Aww. in the concert with me. Aww. He is my best friend, Seth. I love you. <laughs> I just, I love stories. I love I hearing see. other people's stories outside the country instead of like, you get someone in this country and you're like, check out my dog. Uh, you know, do you like Biden? No, shut up. My, <laughs> someone in my family's dying tomorrow. I have to go, I have to. Right. <laughs> I've been in, and you know, I admire that about you. I've been in Ubers with you and you are always oh, very, very communicative and uh, concerned about other people. Always. And I think that's great. I will say though, it almost speaks to a bigger issue, which I think you and I struggle with. I feel like, Erica, you're really good. This is just my perception of you. You're really good at um, communicating your thoughts and then stopping. You and I over talk and we overcompensate our thoughts and we over qualify. Totally. Completely. We don't need to. No is a complete sentence. Yeah. Can't we just say, no, thank you. I, I would I would appreciate you to just pipe it down. I could never in a million years, if you gave me a thousand million hundred dollars, I would never say that to someone. Well, you don't have to say pipe it down, but <laughs> <laughs> when, I mean, if I'm on a flight and generally I fall asleep just riding in an Uber, I just fall asleep anytime there's like a moving, moving vehicle. Yeah, yeah. So I'll tell someone like, yeah, uh -huh, yeah, and that's great for your mom. Girl, you got about five minutes. And I'm about to be out of here because I'm, I'm about that to fall asleep. Good. That's good. And then I put my headphones on and then I fall asleep that's I, I we'll you can say that you're we'll allowed to say that hold each other let's hold each other accountable. No, that's great that's great that's great Erica. okay all right no yep I put down <laughs>